Joining us now is Joel Olson. Joel, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm Joel Olson. I'm a product manager at Cyclotron. In fact, that's a brand new announcement I just started. So uh, exciting times. I'm also uh, the founder of Joel365, which is my my technical blog and uh, my social media go-to-market platform for helping helping companies with their go-to-market strategies in the Microsoft 365 area. You I'm, must I'm be an busy. MVP and an RD. Yeah. And the and blah blah blah. There's and it, it goes. You on. don't get many MVPs <laughs> and RDs. Most people know what an MVP is because uh, we all can't stop telling uh, you what that is. Uh, what's what's a regional director for those that that don't know? Yeah. So the Microsoft regional director is, you could say it's it's an influencer of like on the business side, the executives, um, and as as well. One of the key things they look for in an RD is your ability, not just in the Microsoft ecosystem, but in the industry. Yeah. So if we're, we're talking employee experience, platforms, internet, document management systems, the whole market outside of Microsoft 365 and SharePoint, that's, that, that, that's where you might be talking to execs to help them form their sort of strategies as well. A- ab- absolutely. Yeah. And you could say as well, there's a lot of industry conferences uh, in the in the knowledge management, content management space. Yeah. You know, ECM has been around for ages, and there's a, a, a fairly deep um, set of information around information governance and uh, privacy and things like GDPR. I mean, that stuff yes. goes so deep. There's so much. Oh to gosh, it. yes, years and years of people's lives have been consumed with those, <laughs> those things, especially recently. Um, on today show we were going to talk about SharePoint syntax because this is an area that that you've been doing quite a lot in recently right absolutely Uh, so just for for people who don't know what it is uh we've we've talked about it a couple of times before on the podcast with Ragnar uh, and on the YouTube channel uh, and people might have seen yours and Peter Rising's blog so what's the sort of elevator pitch for syntax and I would even back up and say it started out where we talked about Project Cortex. Yeah. Project Cortex, the more that we understand it, the more we understand that it's an initiative at Microsoft. Um, like just was announced the whole Viva topics and, and really a suite of Viva set of capabilities um, that, that were just barely announced. SharePoint Syntex is the machine teaching side of that equation. Right. Uh, it, it integrates with the Power Platform with AI Builder, but what's that elevator pitch? That elevator pitch is it's it's content understanding, it's electronics forms processing, it's it's the part of it that you can train train it on your documents so that it can classify them and extract content from them. I'd say those are kind of the two main capabilities, yeah. and that when people are trying to just get it in their head, think of it as content extraction and classification. But obviously, it plugs right into the Power Platform. So your ability to do automation on top of that is absolutely right there. An AI builder, which is a component of the Power Platform, but also absolutely fits right in there with SharePoint Syntax. And uh, and, and a lot of people actually think of it as a component of SharePoint Syntax. So there's a lot of different technologies that are all fitting together to make that that happen. So we, we had Project Cortex announced. It was the last in-person Ignite. Uh, I would say two ago. T- tw- <laughs> As somebody who's been following this a long time. The, there, was a, yeah. there was the big sort of Cortex demo, and they had customers who were on the preview yep. up on stage uh, in the videos in 2019, November 2019. And yep. That yep. people said, you know, when will that come into preview? And then they said, at the last Ignite 2020, the first product from that is is, is syntax, uh, and then we've yep. seen this Viva topics, and that's that's showing some of the things that they showed in Cortex originally, but in a in a separate product. Then absolutely. So it's it's, yeah. it's a lot to yeah. take in. So if if Cort yeah, so if, if Cortex is the initiative, yeah. and the first product was SharePoint syntax, which shipped October first, uh, there's there's a lot who are who still haven't even caught up with what is SharePoint syntax. And absolutely, what I was trying to address mm. with that article was, 
you're not sure, you're kind of confused, especially from a licensing perspective. What, what Microsoft has done is they've, they've, they've supported a trial. So you can get a trial of Viva Topics. You can also get a trial of SharePoint Syntax. Yeah. And it's both of them are listed right now as five bucks a user a month. Yeah. So even if you decide to do it, it's not going to break the bank. At least not for a trial, at least. <laughs> but <laughs> but that, that you, you've got to then use it to sort of work out where, where it's going to be useful and, and gain value. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and absolutely, there is a story on the back end of this mm. related to AI Builder in terms of how many documents are you going to be processing. Um, there's, there's the text-based processing for, say, Microsoft Word and that kind of thing, where that's included in the SharePoint Syntax license. Yeah. But if you've got PDFs, um, like object detection, electronics forms processing you want to do with PDFs, you need to be looking at AI Builder credits for those. Okay. And the larger enterprises, they'll, they'll be getting bundles that essentially come with 200 plus users. It's when you have less than that, you need to think about it, if, depending on the types of content you're going to be processing. And hence, that, that, that rolls right back into, yeah, let's, let's, let's start with a trial. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's build a proof of concept. There's, there's baby steps in, in approaching this, but absolutely, there's a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of capabilities here. So Word documents, all, all the sort of Microsoft uh, ecosystem in terms of documents are understood then, the things that you can edit in, in Office. Uh, but if you want to yep. do stuff like PDFs, do, can it do images, scan documents that, that are coming in? Is that where you sort of branching that's, out that's into the AI builder side of it? All right, okay. Yeah, the AI builder side of it does allow you to do image recognition, uh, object detection with AI builder. And the, the, so those, those, those are, come, come in from there. Those are massive challenges for, for companies today in trying to deal with mm -hmm. or, or use old legacy products that they've, they've had where they've just not been very good. And leaning towards a sort of Microsoft 361 strategy those tools don't often just lift and shift across to to act against files in the service then. So you've got to go about it a different way. Uh, so can it, does it work just against files inside SharePoint document libraries or does it, does syntax go wider than that? So, so again, kind of understanding the broader cortex, mm. there's these, um, that, that initiative, there are connectors. So your ability to connect to other repositories but as we have it now yeah. with Syntax, it's primarily focused on these very special kind of SharePoint libraries, um, the, the content um, content center. Yeah. So basically, you can, you can create these content centers. Once you've created your content center, that's where you create the models. That's where you create your extractors. And from there, you can go and apply those models and that cap those capabilities to other libraries inside of SharePoint. But that functionality we're talking about here with Syntax is a SharePoint capability. Yeah. Obviously, an additional license, but it's it's an enhancement to the SharePoint platform in SharePoint Syntax. The, the those connectors I was just referring to, those there's some Azure connectors. There's connectors, say, for things like Salesforce, File Shares. There's a number of Azure connectors on top of that. Um, for, for being able to do indexing. And that's where we see the, the Viva topics come in, um, in terms of the more we understand your data and we reason over your data, the better we can do with the topics yeah. um, from, a, from a Viva topics perspective. And the automation aspect then. So I, I think many people listening will be familiar with how you can use Power Automate against a SharePoint document library or a SharePoint list or even Microsoft lists, right? How does how does automation with Power Automate for Syntex compare to those? Are there any commonalities between those two sort of approaches where you can automate if something gets dropped into a, a column or metadata in, in SharePoint versus what you're going to get out of that content understanding an extraction engine in Syntex? So let me let me give you two scenarios. One is I've got a form. Yeah. I've got whether it's a, a, a basically a form letter or some kind of Word doc. I'm going to go and teach it. I'm going to teach it what these fields are. I'm going to tell it. In fact, I may even create a new content type that basically says these are the columns. And from the syntax perspective, 
that that idea of kind of the machine teaching, helping it understand, it can then extract those things. And you're kind of saying it starts here, it ends here, or it's between these two things, or it's it's metadata and we're going to match it up with metadata. So there's a lot of capabilities from that perspective. Then we jump over to the AI, AI builder one where we're saying, here's a bunch of documents. You go and look at them and it'll process them and say, I think that these are fields. Which ones do you want? And again, it's you selecting those and it's document understanding yeah. type capabilities where you can then say, yep, these are the ones I care about. And then you can take it to the next level and say, I want to turn this into an electronic form. Um, where then people can can actually use this as a form. Um, then the next step on top of that is now that we're extracting this data out of these documents or even day forward using this as an electronic form, whatever data drops in there, hey, there's a contract that's expiring. We want to take action on this, whether it's the account manager needs to follow up with the customer and renew the contract. Um, maybe it's HR benefits they've selected this dental plan. Now we need to go and make sure that uh, they get set up with that that provider, as an example. So the, the idea is it's taking a lot of those manual tasks where they fit maybe in between traditional ERP systems or HR systems, and then people are sending in those forms over email or sending them as attachments, uploading them to a, a SharePoint site. And then instead of somebody having to look at that, read that, and then take that from one system and then place that into another, it's it's trying to automate some of that, especially if it's people are filling in these by hand or whatever and, and sending them up or, or they're being scanned and, and sent in and dropped into a document library somewhere. It's trying to fit fit in yeah. between that sort of no man. Absolutely. No and land. I think I think that these these scenarios we're talking about are very high touch. Mm. Nearly every company has some kind of contracts example, some kind of timesheet example, some example related to HR collecting documents. I mean, I can't go to a doctor's appointment without them handing me a piece of paper. Mm. It's usually a stack of paper that I'm filling out, putting my name on every single one of them. But lately, I have been noticing some of them will hand you an iPad or they'll hand you some kind of electronic device to then fill out the forms. Yes. All of these examples are um, it's it's kind of day forward examples. Let's take our most important uh, documents that kind of run running our business, and these are business critical processes. That by improving them, uh, whether it's some kind of automation or even there are humans along the way, this these these workflows or work streams can be optimized by the idea of extracting content. Um, by classifying and saying this is a timesheet. So when things get mixed up or you're you're trying to take existing content and have um, syntax reason over it and say there's actually five different types of content and I've taught it what these types are, it, it makes old files useful again. And for, for new processes, it's a great piece. For those, in fact, I was talking to somebody recently about their they were doing some power platform work. And as soon as they found out the capabilities of the classification and the extraction and what it can actually do to enhance the content that it was even working with, it's like, wow, this is actually gonna make our jobs a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, this is something we can insert right into the process. And it becomes uh, essentially an additional process in the flow. So it does sound like there's there's a way of, of using this and I guess over time there'll be some really sort of common patterns for doing this as well where instead of trying to rethink the entire process build out a new set of forms build out infrastructure deploy iPads to, to people for electronic form filling and then looking at that return on value in six months or 12 months then the underlying process can be improved even when they're still using the older processes and haven't got all that equipment out there yet so you can sort of fit the two along to some sort of big goal at the end. But it means that potentially they can get some value earlier on, perhaps, you know, within the first month, rather than after they've got all the new equipment and built the new app. 
Absolutely. That's, that, that is Absolutely. interesting. That's, that's, that's an area where it can make that £3 a month or whatever, or $5 a month in the US, uh, quite worthwhile, especially if you were really sort of drilling into particular uh, proof of concepts or processes that were known to be very, very resource intensive then. Yeah, and I think I think there are often a lot of people who are, instead of emailing that document or scanning and faxing that document off to a human who then decides, oh, this is that type of document, I'm going to do it over here. Things can go into more of that idea of a drop folder that from a perspective of, oh, we're going to classify, classify yeah. it, and then we're going to move it, and we'll put it in part of this other process. So your your ability to then gather data, take action on it, it's it really becomes going from a file to actionable content. And it really is this idea of content to knowledge. I, I see how that, that plays out. And as well, once it's now in place, the content's been extracted, now you've got all these columns, you've got a very rich, and it's really an enriching process. Our ability to then take action on it is so much greater. And it's also search, filtering, groups, grouping, all the things you can do on it once you've now got your arms around it. It's very actionable and part of your, it's it's the crown jewels of the company. And uh, the, the more we can do to extract that and make it, underst it's content understanding. Yeah. Let's teach the machine to 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 know what to do with this content and how to how to work with it. Well, we've only really sort of scratched the surface on the podcast today. Um, but the good news is, if you want to learn more about this from Joel, then you've got a tech session coming up um, next week. So details for that are going to be alongside the podcast. And if people want to follow you online, where can they find you? So my blog is collabshow.com. You, you can also get there typing joel365.com. I'm on Twitter. Just It's my name, Joel Olison. Uh, I'm, you, if you can't find me on social media, I've done something wrong, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I'm running a job fair. Um, in fact, I'm going to be repeating that. We're, we're, we're announcing the uh, virtual marathon at the end of April. Um, love to see everybody there. Lots of fun, exciting things going on. Lots of places to find me. Thanks for joining <laughs> us today.